After the long Labor Day weekend, it's back to reality, back to work, back to school, and in Washington, likely back to politics as usual. But after yet another mass shooting claiming the lives of seven people plus the shooter on a West Texas highway over the weekend, it means renewed calls to act on gun control, with the Democratic candidates for president leading the charge. We're averaging about 300 mass shootings a year. No other country comes close. If we're not able to act decisively, then we will continue to have this kind of bloodshed in America. The congressional GOP can only uh, reject the American people's desires for so long before they're going to face a political penalty. Democrats say the time to act is now, but as for the president who was once all about what he called common sense background checks, it's clear the NRA has come calling. We're looking at a lot of different things. We're looking at a lot of different bills. If you look at the last four or five, going back even five or six or seven years, for the most part, as strong as you make your background checks, they would not have stopped any of it. So while we wait on those different things and different bills, the world's second largest retailer is announcing some real changes. Walmart said today it's no longer going to sell handgun ammunition. It's also going to stop selling the types of ammunition that can be used with military-style weapons. Plus, they're asking customers not to openly carry firearms in their stores, even in states that allow open carry. A significant move, as Walmart estimates it has about 20% share of the ammunition market right now. But as Peggy Lee once sang, is that all there is? Will Congress ever pass the kind of reforms most of the country appears to support? Joining me to discuss her is Sue O'Connell, political commentator on NEC, and who recently sat down with candidates Cory Booker, a big gun control guy, and Marianne Williamson. I won't ask about her. Nice to see you. <laughs> Along with former state treasurer, Republican turned independent, and Trump supporter Joe Malone. Joe, it's good to see you. Good to be Let here. me start with you. Two mass killings in one month. In Texas, does that change anything or no? In Congress, I mean. Uh, no, it doesn't change anything in Congress, but I think we are watching how the gun control issue is becoming front and center conversation for the Democrats. And I think if the Republicans know it's good for them, they'll start talking about it. The candidates that you reference are all saying the majority of Americans want some action. I think that eventually it will happen. Am I reading too much into the Walmart thing? I mean, Walmart, oh, no, uh, I assume, <clears throat> what? It's a huge It is it's a huge, a huge I mean, they, issue. They know where the people are and theoretically... Politicians like and they to know found where the, the loophole here. Too, the right. loophole. There's no what mean what? there's no Second Amendment about ammunition, no. right? No yeah. one. You don't have the right to have bullets, right? So the, the Walmart has found a soft spot in being able to limit and track, uh, taking a path where you might be able to track people in, in what ammunition they buy. So let's do a tale of two Trumps here, uh, Joe Malone. Here is the president on August 9th, and then on September 1st. We need meaningful background checks. For the most part, as strong as you make your background checks, they would not have stopped any of it. Okay, say so Mitch McConnell, who runs the Senate, says he'll do whatever Trump says he should do. What is Trump going to say he should do? So I was talking to someone today who said, you know what, I support Trump, but boy, I think on the gun issue, it's his weakest area. And he's got to do something to, to be, number one, credible with the American people who overwhelmingly would like to see some reforms take place. Including a huge percentage of NRA members on background checks, by so the way. So I, I would not be shocked if he reaches out to the Congress now that they're back from their uh, break and says, let's come up with something. And, and what behind is something? Scenes, is it back? I mean, there was a story today on, I think it was on ABC, saying that, that it is not even preposterous, my words, not theirs, but it was a suggestion, <laughs> that, that uh, high-capacity magazines, uh, like the 100 uh, round uh, magazines that were used in Las Vegas, 10 shots per second gotten off by the guy that killed 58 people. Is it even plausible to think that something like magazines could be limited by Congress? So, you know what, I, I think unless they do something like that, I think the Republicans are going to feel a lot of heat. And if I'm in Donald Trump's shoes, I go to the NRA and say, guys, you're being greedy here. You talk about a slippery slope. You take away our AK-47s. What's next? No. You guys have to come up with uh, an understanding that if you don't get me because of this gun issue, you're going to end up with someone who's a lot worse for your Second Amendment so issue. Let me, I'm surprised to hear you say this. I'm glad to hear you say this. But let me dampen the enthusiasm, if I can, a little sure. bit. Texas 
this is where I started this whole conversation. Uh, Governor Abbott uh, seemed like a, he was doing a hostage video when yeah. he finally emerged and said on one hand and on the other, saying absolutely nothing. Ted Cruz, of course, like a lot of Republicans do, senator from Texas, immediately talks about show all the shootings in Chicago and tweets, of course, mm -hmm. gun control didn't help there. So if we don't, and of course the mayor shot back and said, well, if you're paying attention, first of all, you should shut up, she said, Mayor Lightfoot. She goes on to say 60% of the illegal weapons in Chicago that are seized come from uh, 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 out of a state. Is that not a barometer, too? Well, I was trying to find hope in Walmart and in Joe Malone. Is there there's a lack of hope when the two leaders from Texas seem to be on the wrong this side? This is like same-sex marriage, right? This is like marriage equality. I'm really, here this Because it's going to be a state-by-state. State. Oh. It's going to be a city-by-city. City. There's going to be some federal law. There's going to be some action in terms of where the politics are. But it's state-by-state state now, and Massachusetts has tough laws. Right. New Hampshire's got virtually and none. It's a disaster. Has marriage equality first, yeah. and now the rest of the country has it. So I think that... Oh, you that, mean it'll trickle up, I think it will trickle up. I, I also think that it's it's really important to note that the way that the youth culture is changing right now, again, like we watched same sex marriage, the the younger people as yeah. they became older and became politically active, they, they were they didn't have a big problem with it. Well, this same generation, that same demographic has a huge problem with guns and they are voting and they are mobilizing. And I think to Joe's point, eventually the Republicans are gonna say, if we want any of these young people to vote yeah. Republican, we're gonna have to get with it on the So we have young people and Joe Malone. Now that <laughs> that is an, that's like a coalition. winning combo. <laughs> and not necessarily an old person. <laughs> exactly. Joe. Alone. I, Can we I see where that was going. Speaking <laughs> of old persons, let's talk about Joe Biden for a minute. After Biden <laughs> repeatedly told an anecdote about a war hero and him, himself, in Afghanistan, the Washington Post, in the name of Matt Visor, used to work here at the Globe, found that the former VP combined details from several different events into one roughly inaccurate composite story. When confronted about it, here's how Vice President Biden responded on National Public Radio. I was making a point about a generation that has nothing to do with the judgment of whether or not you send troops to war, the judgment of whether you bring someone home, the judgment of whether or not you decide on a health care policy. The details are irrelevant in terms of decision making. You know, John King was with us on the radio today from CNN, and when we played details are irrelevant, he said, yeah, Iraq has weapons of the mass destruction or it doesn't. That. I mean, that kind of defense of this is Frightening. I'll, I'll quote the great Jay Severin. Yeah. Compared to what? Meaning right? what? Compared to Trump? I mean, are we, are, at least Joe Biden actually had met people and was doing the things that he said he did. He just mixed them all up into one made-for-TV movie. It's so this not, doesn't trouble you because it's not as bad? Oh, no, it totally troubles me, but again, compared to what? And I think it's up to the Democrats to decide how much this is going to trouble them or if they want someone who they believe is directionally doing what they're going to do, like the Republicans have decided with Donald Trump. They're fine with their court appointments and their judges. They're fine with him thinking that he saw things on 9-11 that he didn't see. I think it's just going to be what the Democrats can tolerate. You know, the word, I can't the word gaff, and these I don't think these really are gaffes, so we'll try not to use it. But whatever, when he's in Keene, New Hampshire, and he says it's great to be in Vermont, it is great when to he be talks, in Vermont. When he it is, but if you're there, it's great to be in Vermont. When he talks about if Obama had been assassinated, yeah. on and on and on. It seems to me that one of the reasons that polls suggest that Biden is weathering these far better than we in our little bubble here think. I don't mean on this set, but in this oh. part of the world, maybe thinking in the land of Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders is because of the Trump effect, is you can make more mistakes, you can bend the truth more, and you don't have to be Donald Trump to benefit from it. Is that a fair statement or not? Well, I think uh, the cumulative effect here is very, very much a cause for concern, I think, for Democratic uh, uh, voters. What, the Trump lies? No, no, of no the cumulative effect that oh, Biden, Biden no, it's sorry. once a week, it, it really is. But secondly, he looks shaky. I mean, you see him in those debates. He just is, you know, reaching for words and so forth. If I'm a Democrat wanting to beat Trump, I want someone who projects a strength and someone Clinton who is beat, sharp. Hillary Clinton beat Trump in the debates, and it didn't mean it didn't make any difference. So it doesn't matter. Well, Kamala Harris bludgeoned Joe Biden in the it first debate, and she's difference. back in but, single digits. But again, digits. I think here is the difference. You will have a moment in this campaign. And remember Perry in the last one, the Republican governor from Texas. He couldn't remember the third of the two things. You will Mitt have Romney a chance. Mitt Romney answer for him. When this remember? gets, it, yeah, that's right. No, third secretary, secretary. Sec, uh, uh, department that he would eliminate. Exactly. Yes. Energy, I think. Yeah. So, so um, you, you'll get a point where this field narrows down and all the dimes will be dropped on Joe. Did you hear what he said today? Did you hear what he said? And the whole thing is going to turn. When people, selfishly, Democrats are going to say, Joe is a wonderful 
political guy, but we got to have someone else. One last issue that people are talking about this weekend. Joe Biden was talking to a New York Times reporter. He was asked about why he's running, and here's what he had to say. I think it's really, really, really important that Donald Trump not be reelected. Could I die happily not having heard hail to the chief play for me? Yeah, I could. That's not why I'm running. And a lot of people have been critical of that response, comparing it to a legendary, long-winded answer to why you were running in 1980, Roger Mudd of Ted Kennedy. Why do you want to be president? Well, I'm... Uh, were I to, to make the, uh, the announcement and uh, to run, the reasons that I would run is because I have a great belief in this country that it is as more natural resources than any nation of the world, he did a little better when you ran against him than he may have done in that uh, that interview. But is this as calamitous, if that's a word, for Joe Biden as that was for uh, uh, Ted Kennedy? Again, I just think it's one of many that adds up to this guy is shaky. He's not the okay. best guy to put in Do you think it's a problem? No, I think people know what they're getting with Joe Biden, and they're getting exactly what they've been Somebody getting for 20 years. Somebody who theoretically can beat. Well, who can theoretically beat Donald Trump and is going to make these so-called gaffes and is going to be directionally in the way that they sure, want to be. Okay, can I, yeah, go i got to change gears because yeah. I want to get to okay. you about Trump for a second. I, so, something I don't understand at all. If it's the economy stupid for Donald Trump, it's almost like the guy has a death wish on these tariffs. I don't understand this at all. There are soybean farmers who are abandoning him. There are soon to be retirees who are abandoning him because of this tariff thing where he seems to have no end point or a point to be. Does this surprise you so, that he's pursuing this path in the area where he is arguably his greatest and most important strength? So some would see it as this is a an absolutely act of an act of courage on his part because the other presidents have said, I don't want to mess with China. That may be like true. The, and by the way, I think there is the some road. truth to that. But would you not agree that it is disastrous for him if he doesn't come out of this hole? So wouldn't it be nice, though, occasionally when we have a politician who says, you know what, I'm going to do what's right and not worry about the election. George H.W. Bush doing. did that, too. What happened to him? You know, it may cost him. I will say this. I think more and more people recognize our intellectual property is being stolen by the Chinese. They're breaking every rule. A lot of soybean farmers feel that way. So what, what are you, uh, that was a joke, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. both missed no, it. Quickly. I agree. I think China has needs to be reckoned with and China needs to be taken into hand with the way America does business with them. The problem is you can't count on Donald Trump. You don't know what he's going to say today, what it's going to say tomorrow. The more he tweets, the worse the stock market does. I don't know why that he just doesn't go into a room, stop tweeting, stop fighting China the way that he's fighting it. And if he were doing something that I thought was thoughtful and planned, I would be good with it. But so I don't think we, he we are winning this battle with China. Right we are. Now. They're getting hurt much more than we are. Absolutely. President Xi called you Absolutely. on the phone too. Apparently, I, I talked to him weekly. <laughs> nice to see you, Joe. Nice to see you, Jim. Sue O'Connell, really appreciate it. Pleasure, your time. Sue.